This is breaking news from 8 News Now. Thanks for staying with us for 8 News Now at 5. I'm joined by my colleague Dave Cravassier. We've been following this brush fire on I-15 for the last hour. In the middle of the afternoon, this fire broke out. It is now consuming something close to 2,000 acres of brush. This is high desert brush around the Cajon Pass area. You're looking at the southbound lanes just below the peak of Cajon Pass. These trucks and cars are stopped in the road, many of them are catching fire, and boy, it is really a mess there. We've seen three distinct areas where car fires were affecting as many as a dozen cars. Uh, the black smoke that you see right now, one of those is a large semi-truck. They've dumped water on it, but uh, it, and the flames have come down so somewhat. We've had a number of questions about how this fire got started. We're not sure of the genesis of this fire just yet, but we know it has really made a mess of the interstate. We've seen trucks, semis, even boats pulled on trailers and cars consumed by the flames coming up from the scrub brush below the interstate. Uh, there have been some attempts to put out the flames, not only by helicopters with buckets, but with some firefighters on the ground, on the road, trying to put out the flames. I'm not sure how effective it's been. I'm not sure where they're actually finding access to water there. It is a difficult place to get close to if you're not on the interstate, and the interstate is basically a parking lot right now. The firefighters did have a vehicle. I'm assuming it was a tanker, and that they also may have had uh, packs with water. I don't know exactly what they were, what they were able to bring in but that was where they got now we're watching the orange retardant from one of those four it's a super tankers tanker, right NHP is uh, encouraging travelers to uh, to keep it at home right now don't try traveling to Southern California I'm sure Californians in the LA basin are being told the same the road is shut down both directions and um, the fire has not shown any signs of, uh, of abating if you're just joining us, this is a fire which started at 2.30 in Cajon Pass, surrounding the area of I-15, just north of State Route 138, California State Route 138. And there are cars on fire, and this has spread to 2,000 acres over two and a half hours. We have crews uh, heading out that way. We have Patrick Walker standing by here in the studio. Uh, who has covered a number of these fires in the Southern California area. Patrick, we've seen fires at Cajon Pass before, uh, but this takes the cake. Yeah, this is very interesting, partly because of all of the uh, traffic you've seen on the road that's stuck. As we stay with this picture here that I'm kind of looking at, this is that DC-10 very large air tanker. There are three of these in the United States. They are on contract. They are usually on contract to the Forest Service or CAL FIRE, which on its own has the largest aerial firefighting fleet in the world, which is a very interesting fact there. But basically, let's just talk about what firefighters are having to deal with and why this is spread so fast. You can see this is kind of that high chaparral terrain. It's on a hillside. You have the upslope winds driving the fire up. Fire always burns quicker uphill. It's dry. These are flash fuels. These type of thin, quick burning fuels allow the fire to move very fast and move quickly up the hill. So of course, the fire started below that line of I-15 where those cars are. Some of them were trapped and uh, in speaking with uh, one of the Cal Fire and uh, San Bernardino County representatives on the phone about a half an hour ago, one of the big things that problems to getting those cars cleared out is simply when people have been evacuated from their vehicles, they've taken their keys with them. It's taken fire engines a long time to get to the fire. Obviously, this is out on the pass. The roads are narrow. It's hard to get the engines in place to try to fight the fire. We've seen aerial drops of water from helicopters trying to put that out. But one of the big problems you're going to see is if it takes fire engines a long time to get up there, it's going to take tow trucks even longer to get up there to try to pull those cars out of the way. And one of the other things, as we've seen from these pictures, that picture on the right, you're seeing the line of fire in that high chaparral and those brushes. Yes, we've seen these fires burning in the cars. We don't know of any injuries at this point, but the fire has also burned up to the town. We're receiving reports and have seen pictures where the fire has burned to that town where there are mandatory evacuations in place. So very dangerous situation out there. And fire Firefighters may get a chance to get out ahead of this fire as it gets on top of the Mesa, but as long as it's burning uphill, they just have to try to fight this one from the air, guys. Did you get any word from some of your sources on whether they have gotten all their resources in there yet? They were being hampered by various things. Yeah, there are a number of problems when you talk about the aerial fleet getting in. There were reports of drones that were flying around by 
uh, amateur hobbyists out there flying the drones, trying to get pictures. That has been a problem several times this summer, but uh, CAL FIRE, we understand, sending four helicopters and four fixed-wing tankers in there, the very large aircraft DC-10, uh, that big tanker, that also likely came possibly from as far away as Sacramento or San Diego, or it could have come from another state based on the time now, an hour and a half, two and a half hours into this fire. So those resources get ordered sometimes from other states, so they're just trying to get the engines and strike teams. Remember, you're trying to put out a fire near the road and help the folks that are on the roadway, but you're trying to save the homes, so structure engines, strike teams from neighboring fire departments and neighboring cities are coming right now as part of how these fires are managed in California. So you're going to be seeing hundreds of firefighters rolling into the area as the evening progresses and as uh, the sun goes down. But uh, for now, they're just trying to get everybody into place. Uh, the quote I can say from one of my sources is a lot of people are on order at this time. Very difficult proposition for the firefighters. Thank you, Patrick, for your perspective on all that. Uh, we have waiting for us now on the phone, uh, some of you may recognize this name, Cedric Creer, who is a former Las Vegas planning commissioner. Uh, Cedric, can you hear us? I can hear you. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Thanks for calling in. Can you tell us where you are? We are right now at the top of the Cajon Pass as you leave Victorville. Uh, we were at the bottom of the Cajon Pass, which was ground zero where that fire first started. So you managed to get uh, your northbound I-15 and you managed to get past the smoke? No, we are not past the smoke. We're on the top of the Cajon Pass. The smoke is on the bottom as you're coming around the curve, as you're coming around the turn, uh, going toward the tin. And it was just a surreal scene. It was literally, we were there right at ground zero and saw when the fire first started, uh, firefighters showed up. They uh, initially took an evaluation of the scene cars were still going through and then they finally stopped cars from moving and that's when uh, the fire just spread. I mean it spread faster than you could possibly imagine. It jumped across the highway. It literally sparked. We saw it spark. It within five minutes it was up the side of the mountain and going over the hill again. It was really just surreal. It's out of a movie scene. You couldn't, you couldn't script something like this. Cedric, are you, um, your car is stopped right now, correct? Yeah, we actually have two cars because I was taking my daughter's soccer team down to San Diego for a soccer tournament on the, on the heat team. And I'm driving the team van and my wife is in a car which was stopped. We managed to get the van out. The van is on top of the hill, which is good. We, we saw a couple of elderly people, uh, uh, one from Reno actually, just, just by happenstance. And we, we brought her up. We saw a pregnant lady who was carrying her baby and also another child and her, and her mother we asked them if they wanted a ride. We got them up. They're safe. They're in the air-conditioned van now. Uh, but my wife's car is still stuck down at ground zero. So it potentially it could be covered with tartan or it could be on fire. I don't know. Wow. Maybe you can tell me. Have, they, uh, have the authorities told you when you might be moving again? No, they have not. Actually, they're still trying to move people out. There are still some people down, and they're trying to get out the big rigs out because yeah. it's just gridlock. So they're are they trying, to, they're trying to get the cars out, try to get the big rigs out so that uh, they can get still the emergency crew in and they can try to clear, clear up the road. So we don't know. We're either going to be, they're going to probably clear it up maybe, but the fire is somewhat contained. Uh, clear it up and we're going to go through or we're going to have to turn it back around. I don't know yet. So no one's told you to evacuate your car or leave your vehicle. Uh, you're hoping for clearance ahead so that you might move off. Well, potentially, but they did ask us to move up, and so okay. we are up. We, I was able to get back into my, the van. We left the van initially, but we all grabbed as much stuff as we could and started running out the van like everybody else. So the van was probably sitting idle about an hour and a half, and after that, I made my way back down to see if I, cause I saw cars coming back up, made my way back down, found the van, was able to maneuver through the emergency lane and through some other trucks to get it back up to where we are now. Mm. All right. Cedric Creer of the uh, former Las Vegas Planning Commission trying to get a soccer team down to San Diego. We spoke to someone else earlier in the 4 o'clock news, Emily Grant, also involved in taking a soccer team right. down. We sure hope you're all right, Cedric, and your whole team. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you guys. And God bless everybody, to the firefighters and to all the uh, safety people. They're, they're, they're doing the best they can. They're doing a fantastic job. Well but, said. Right. That Thanks, is, Cedric. Uh, that is a huge soccer tournament in San Diego if it's Surf Cup, and I think that's the one they're heading to. There will be many, many more people uh, yeah. stymied from uh, their oh, plans dear. this weekend. Uh, Scott Daniels standing by on I-15 uh, at Prim. Scott, what are you seeing? 
Dave, we're live at the California-Nevada border. Traffic is moving fine, especially from Nevada. Take a look at I-15 right now. Traffic moving smoothly in each direction. The only complication we found was there was heavy winds as you're heading in from Gene towards Prim, and that definitely cannot help the firefighters case about two hours south towards Victorville at the Cajon Pass. As reporter Patrick Walker stated, the fire department is attacking the blaze from the sky because it's hard and it's narrow uh, roads are hard to attack it from the ground, which means vehicles, regular tourists going to uh, Los Angeles for the weekend. Those cars definitely cannot make it through about two hours south of here. So you might want to change your plans or at least delay them until tomorrow. This is figured out in Victorville at El, uh, the Cajon Pass. We're going to make our way that direction. Right now, we are again live at the California Nevada border where traffic is moving smoothly. But again, we are expecting many delays as the traffic is at a standstill about two hours from here at Victorville. Back to you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Scott Daniels Scott. reporting from Prim, where uh, traffic is expected to get bad, but right now it is flowing. And still looking at this one bad hot spot along the southbound I-15, just below the peak of the Cajon Pass, where a number of cars, trucks, semis, SUVs, a uh, trailer being pulled uh, by a car with a boat on the back, all destroyed. Those cars abandoned. This is a real problem for traffic officials and for the uh, e efficacy of the road. As Paula mentioned earlier, this uh, kind of heat can destroy the pavement. It sure can. And as Patrick said, when people leave their cars, they take the keys. So that's going to uh, complicate things in cleaning all this up. Uh, we're going to show you what some people are saying on social media who are trapped in that right now. And as we take a look at that, we will be right back after a short break. Stay with us.